हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू अवर डिटेल्ड लुक एट वन ऑफ द मोस्ट फंडामेंटल बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक्स इन मॉडर्न इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स द ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर और ओप एम्प एट इट्स कोर एन ओप एम्प इज अ हाई गेन डायरेक्ट करंट कपल वोल्टेज एम्पलीफायर इट हैज टू इनपुट्स हेयर वी कैन सी देर आर टू इनपुट्स एन इन्वर्टिंग एंड नॉन इन्वर्टिंग एंड वन आउटपुट its job is to amplify the difference in the voltage difference its two terminal between v1 and between v2 the name operational comes from its original use in analog computers to perform mathematical operations like addition subtraction integration and differentiation today they are everywhere from audio amplifiers to filters and sensor circuits To download our electrical engineering app you can visit this website link electrical-engineering.app it is specially designed for electrical and electronics engineering students and teachers now to understand how to use them we first need to look at what's inside so both in the real world and in its idealized form which makes our lives as engineers and hobbyists much easier so first of all the non ideal real world op amp model so here we can see this is the diagram for the equivalent circuit of the non ideal op amp so let's start by looking at this diagram which represents a non ideal or real world op amp this is simplified model of the complex circuitry inside an actual op amp chip it help us understand its practical limitations so first of all these are the two inputs v1 and v2 now here this v1 is connected to the inverting input mark with minus sign now here we can see it is mark with minus sign a signal applied here will be 180 degree out of phase with the output so here we get the inverted output then next is v2 now v2 is connected to the non inverting input mark with plus sign here we can see it is mark with plus sign a signal applied here will be in phase with the output but we get the amplified output then the op amp amplifies the difference between these two voltages which we call the, the differential voltage vd and it is equal to v2 minus v1 remember that this vd is the differential voltage and it is equal to v2 minus v1 then next is input resistance ri this ri represents input resistance now here the image notes that the input resistance should be high now why it should be high a high input impedance is crucial because it means the op amp draws almost no current from the circuit connects connected to its input think of it like a perfect voltmeter it measures a voltage without disturbing or loading down the circuit it's measuring in real op amp r1 or ri is very high often in the mega ohm or even in giga ohms now we will see the amplification stage avd so here this a represents gain now here this diamond shape represents a voltage controlled voltage source its value is a into vd where this a is the open loop gain and vd is the differential input voltage we just discussed this is the heart of the op amp it's the part that does actual amplification then next is output resistance which is represented by ro the image notes that the output resistance should be low here we can see the input resistance should be high and output resistance should be low now why the output resistance should be low a low output resistance allows the op amp to deliver its amplified voltage 
to the next stage the load now uh, output resistance allows the op amp to deliver its amplified voltage to the next stage that is the load without a significant voltage drop it acts like a strong stable voltage source that can deliver various loads effectively real op amps have a low ro so actually it should have very low resistance or uh, low value of uh, uh, resistance typically in the range of few tens to a few hundred ohms then next is it is a direct current coupled voltage amplifier now this is the key feature dc coupled means the op amp can amplify signals of all frequencies right down to 0 hertz which is dc or direct current this makes it incredibly versatile unlike ac coupled amplifiers that blocks dc signal with capacitors now next open loop voltage gain which is represented by this a the fundamental equation for the op amp is shown here vo is equal to avd which expands to vo is equal to a into v2 minus v1 now here we know that vd is v2 minus v1 so first of all let's see what is open loop voltage gain which is represented by a now remember that the open loop gain should be high now open loop means there is no feedback connection from the output output back to the input in this state the gain a is enormous for a typical op amp like ic741 a can be very high for modern op amps it should be over uh, it should be it should be also very high in practically because a is so large even a tiny difference between v1 and v2 a few microvolt will cause the output vo to swing to its maximum possible voltage a state called saturation this is why we almost never use op amps in an open loop configuration except as a simple comparator then next is the ideal op amp characteristics now here we can see now analyzing circuits with all the all those non ideal values like ri is equal to 1 mega ohm ro is equal to 50 ohm can be very complicated to simplify things we use the ideal op amp model so this is the ideal op amp model this model is an approximation but it's incredibly accurate for most applications let's look at its characteristic uh, which are the perfect version of real world parameters so first of all open loop gain which is represented by a now it should be infinite in case of ideal op amp so in the ideal model we assume the gain is indefinitely or infinitely large this is the most important assumption and has a profound consequence we will see in a moment then input resistance ri now it should be also infinite in case of ideal op amp we assume the resistance at the input is infinite this means an ideal op amp draws zero current into its input terminals then next is output resistance now ideally it should be zero practically it is very low but ideally it should be zero we assume the output resistance is zero this means an ideal op amp is a perfect voltage source that can supply any amount of current to a load without its output voltage changing then next is bandwidth of operation so it should be infinite an ideal op amp can amplify any signal from dc to any infi infinitely high frequency which is the which the same infinite gain with the same infinite gain real op amps 
have a limited bandwidth and their gain drops as frequency increases. Then next is offset voltage. So ideally the offset voltage should be zero. An ideal op-amp produces exactly zero output voltage when the input voltage difference VD is zero. Real world op-amp have a, a small input offset voltage that can cause a non-zero output in the in this condition. Now next we will see the two golden rules for ideal op-amp analysis. So here these ideal characteristics gives us two simple but powerful rules often called the golden rules of op-amp analysis. These rules apply when the op-amp is used in a negative feedback configuration where the output is connected back to the inverting input which is how it's used 99% of the time. Now first golden rule is this I1 is equal to 0 and I2 is equal to 0. So as we know that the input resistance is infinite so the value of input current I1 and the value of input current I2 should be 0 because the input resistance is infinite. So this rules came directly from ideal characteristics of infinite input resistance Ri is equal to infinite. If the resistance is infinite Ohm's law according to Ohm's law we know that voltage is equal to current into resistance or I is equal to V by R tells us that no current can flow into the input terminals. Now this dramatically simplifies circuit analysis especially when using techniques like KCL at the input nodes. Now rule number two or the or we can say golden rule number two the input voltages are equal. So here V1 is equal to V2. Now this rule is clever consequence of infinite open loop gain. So here open loop gain should be infinite in case of ideal op-amp. So that's why V1 should be equal to V2. Now look at look at the gain equation VO is equal to here we can see VO is equal to A into VD where this A represents open loop voltage gain and it should be high. Now in negative feedback circuit the output voltage VO is stable. The output voltage VO is stable. Now next is the diagram shows an equation for IO. Now this IO is the output current. Here we can see IO is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I plus plus I minus. So here it's important to clarify while the input currents are zero, the output current IO is not zero. The op-amp job is to supply current to the load. This current is provided by the op-amps power supply pins. Now here, here we can see these are the power pins. Uh, uh, it is from the, it is, it is not from the input. Now to summarize this, a real op-amp has, let's summarize this. Number one point, a real op-amp has very high but, but finite input resistance. So here, this Ri should be very high. And gain, the gain should be also very high and very low but not zero output resistance. Then point number two, to make analysis easy, we use the ideal op-amp model. Here we can see this is the ideal op-amp model. Where we assume these values are perfect, infinite gain, infinite input resistance and zero output resistance. Then number three, these ideal assumptions gives us two golden rules for circuits with negative feedback. No current flows into the input and the voltage voltages at the two inputs are equal. That is V1 is equal to V2. Now by applying these two simple rules, we can analyze and design a vast array of powerful and useful analog circuits 
दे आर द की दैट अनलॉक द पावर ऑफ द ओप एम्प सो दिस इज अबाउट आइडियल ओप एम्प एंड नॉन आइडियल ओप एम्प सो डोंट फॉरगेट टू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू दिस चैनल एंड थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग